In this video, we're going to continue talking about reproducible research and specifically talking about these R markdown files, the RMD files. We'll talk just a little bit more about how you can work with those as you start moving as, into those as a way to kind of share your code and the outputs you get. So I've got a few tips down here for working with R markdown files. Uh, first of all, you do need to make sure that you save your R markdown file before you run it. Um, otherwise, you might get a query that you need to do that before it'll compile the whole thing. The next thing that I wanted to point out is, first of all, which working directory it's using when it runs, and that it's really running as if you were in a fresh R session. So let's move over into R Studio and take a look at that. We'll go through, this is still a version of the template file, and we'll actually get rid of all of this and do something fresh here. So if we wanted to, we could do um, kind of like World Cup data. We've been working with that a lot. And we could include a code chunk where we load the fairway package. And then we do data world cup. So maybe this would be like our load data. And then we could have another one where we do a summary. Then we can add in some text if we want, like here's a summary. And then here, let's say first load your data. All right, so I can save this and run it. And it should run through. It's, it's loading that package. I had it installed, so it should be good to go there. And then it runs the summary code. And then again, it's, it's putting the output for that. Now, this is working because we have everything that we need as if we were starting fresh. But you can't rely on there being something in your existing R environment that will work and allow you to do this. So for example, we could come down here and do library fairway. And then we could do data world cup. And let's look at the summary just so we have that as a real data frame and not just a promise. So you can see we have it up here in our environment. But if we take this out here and try to start with that summary of world cup, this would work if we did it in our console because we have that data loaded, right? So we could come down to our console and run it and it works fine. But we can't do it in our R markdown because it's running it as if it's starting from a new R session. So if we try to knit right now, we'll see that we have an error there. It can't find the World Cup um, because it's something that we haven't loaded yet. So we need to make sure that we load up here. The other piece there was about the working directory that you're using in R. So this will treat as the working directory the the directory where you have the rmd saved so right now i have this saved in this practice r r project and that means that we can call files just as if we were working in this working directory so let's see we could do maybe some other data for a new section and we've got some data in this data folder that we could load so we could do the daily show guess that's that's a comma separated value so let's do the reader package and then we can do that daily show. And we'll do read CSV. And then again, because we're working from this project directory, we need to go into the subdirectory of data. And then we can use tab completion from there and that should work fine for us. We can select this one. And I think that we have for that, we needed to skip a few rows, maybe four. All right, so we can try, we'll save that, and then we'll try knitting that to render it into that HTML output. Great, so you can see it went through and it gave us this output information that is the mes message we often get uh, when we do read underscore CSV or the other things in Reader, where it lets us know what it guessed each column was. And then we can see that it read in the data correctly. So it was able to do that because it's treating that directory where the RMD file is saved as the working directory when it runs all of the code that's inside the R markdown document. There's one more thing I can show here. Sometimes we don't want this kind of extra warning and message material. So I believe that one is actually a message that's coming through. So we can use one of those options, right? We can come down here. So it's happening when we do read CSV. So we can do message equals false. 
And we can see that might turn that off. Yeah, so now we don't have that extra message printing out. So that can be helpful to do with messages and sometimes with warnings, although with the warnings, you want to check and make sure you understand it and it's not something you really need to be concerned about. Uh, but once you do, and if it's something that's okay, you can you can um, make those those uh, uh, warning messages be quiet to not show up in your in your output. All right, um, there's another thing that you can do that's really helpful as you're working with these, and that is how you can run the code that's inside each of those chunks. So you don't have to just think of it and then cross your fingers and hope it's going to work. You can actually work through your document and try it out and make sure it's working OK. Uh, so we can take a look at that over here. Let's look at an example again right here where we're installing, uh, or sorry, loading the read our package and then reading in the data. So if we wanted to run all of the code in this chunk, we can actually go up and there's a run button and we can select things there. So we can either run the line that we're in. If we want to, we can run all of the code in that chunk with this run current chunk. You can see it kind of does the green there as it's running all of it. And then it gives the output right down here. So this is the result of this final piece of doing the head of Daily Show. If you check in the console, you'll see that it's run it down there too. The other thing that you can do is you can run these lines of code uh, one by one. So let me clear that up a little bit. We can go through and you can either do run just by itself, which runs the current line, or control return, the same command that you use if you're working from a script. As you go through that, it will again run each line of the code. So I just did that library line. It'll bring that down to the console and run it there. We can try here too. You can again see it's running it down in the console and then we can do the head. And again, it's showing that output right underneath here at the top, but it is also run it down in the console. So those allow you to go through and work with pieces of code a bit at a time to kind of build up the code that you want to have in that R markdown document. So far, we've been compiling our, our uh, documents to an HTML output, and we see it in kind of a format that would show up in a web, web page. But there are other formats you can use, too. Uh, Word is very helpful for homeworks for this class. You'll be compiling some stuff to Word. If you would like to do that rather than HTML, there are two things you can do. First of all, when you open your new, your new R markdown, if you already know that's what you want to use, you can change and select Word as, as your uh, default output format rather than HTML, which is the, the selection that shows up at first. The other thing that you can do is if you already have your document in a different format, if you've already selected it, you can go up to knit and instead of pressing knit, you can press the little button beside that and pick what you want to knit it to. So if you would prefer to knit it to, to Word instead of HTML, you can go through and click on that. And then it should go through and process the whole thing and output it in Word. Now you can see when you do that, that it's saved this as a read-only copy, um, at least in my operating system. And that's good because if you wanna change something here, you shouldn't change it on this Word document because that will get overwritten every time you re-render from the R markdown. So instead you wanna make all of your changes in the R markdown, but this allows you to have it in this format when you're done. And you can go through and see that it's done those same kinds of output where it's put the code that we used and it's also put the output from running some of that R code. You can render to PDF as well. These are very attractive documents and they're really good for reports. To do that, you need to go up to knit and then you'll pick knit to PDF. Now, the only trick here is that you do need to have some kind of a tech engine installed on your computer, something that can render from, from LaTeX to a PDF. Um, the most popular ones I think for working with RStudio are MicTech if you're working on a Windows operating system or MacTech if you're working on, a, on um, a Mac. So depending on those, you'll wanna install that software. The software installation does take a little while when you, when you run it. So you might need to let your computer sit for an hour or two and kind of get that on. But once you do, you should be able to set up and render to a PDF output. And you can see the example here for that same file. There are some other things as well. You can actually create slide decks with this. Um, so one of the, the easiest ones, I think, for that, and the one that I prefer, certainly, 
is to do a presentation that's a PDF. So that's using Beamer, which is using that LaTeX engine, the same engine that, that um, transfers a regular document to PDF. So again, you will need to have MCTEC or MACTEC. But you can also do different HTML formats like IO slides and Slidey, and you even now can create PowerPoint slides by doing this. So that's something you might want to play around with a lot. It's really helpful when you're giving scientific presentations to uh, be able to put some of the code for your figures right there in the document that's writing the, pre the presentation. Um, if you want to share these documents with Word or PDF, certainly those are very easy to email. With HTML, it can be a little bit harder, but it turns out that you can freely post our markdown documents that you've created at a website called RPUBS. You do need an account for that, but once you have that, it's a free way to share them. Now, they are public, is my understanding, under kind of all iterations, so you only want to share things that you don't mind being out for, for anybody to see. If you go and look at that website, um, it's also a really interesting place to see some things people are doing with R. So you can go and it'll give you some of the recently published documents and you can kind of click through and explore and see what, what different people are working on. Every now and then it will get a little bit dominated. Some of the uh, massive open online courses use this as part of their, their assignments that they're having people post and share. So every now and then you'll get loads of assignments that are clearly all kind of covering the same topic, but it's still interesting to go through and look at those as well. So we'll wrap up with that. I think that's covered everything that you really are going to find useful as you first start working with these R markdown files. And then we'll work a little bit more with more subtle things that you can do later in the class. But I did want to point you first to some resources if you want to explore more either now or if later, once you've gotten the hang of it, you want to go through and find out more. A wonderful one that just came out in the past year or so is called R Markdown, The Definitive Guide. It's by a group of, of um, co-authors who are all at R Studio, including Yue Ji, who is the person who created the Knitter system on R. Um, so that one is available both in a print edition and it's also freely available online through the link I gave there. There's another one that's really good by Christopher Gandron that's called Reproducible Research with R and R Studio. The CSU library does have a copy of that. I think it's in its second edition now. But that one's really interesting. It gives these whole ideas for how you can even go beyond that and use some other things from computer science to come in, like using make files, which are very popular in compiled languages like C. Um, and then finally, the original book on this is by UAG. It's called Dynamic Dy Documents with R and Knitter, and it really describes the origins and, and first pieces of the knitter system.